Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Beyond the Gate with Dustman and Nate. I'm Dustman, and here with me, as always, my dog, Nate. What's up, everybody? On this week, we've got Ryder and Ryan on. We're going to get to know them. There's some local shredders that we've known for a long time, some good friends. So, Ryder, what's your, uh, what class do you race? I race uh, 17 to 20 expert. And how long have you been racing? Um, I've been racing about 10 to 11 years since I was about 8 years old. So, yeah. And who do you ride for? Um, I ride for um, Kegel's Bike Shop right out of Rockford. Sweet. And Ryan, how long have you been riding for? I've been riding for... 15, 16 years since yeah. I was five. And you race in the same class as Ryder, right? 17 yeah, no, 20? Yeah. Yep, 17 20. Sweet. And who do you ride for? We ride for DFR. Right on. So, Ryder, how did you uh, end up finding BMX? Um, Actually, I got into trouble when I was a little kid. I used to like to talk when I was, like, I still do a little bit, but like, I like to talk in school. I ended up getting in trouble and I wanted to not be grounded or in the house, you know, stuck in the house. So I said I wanted to go to a friend's birthday party to learn BMX because I knew he did it. So I ended up going, you know, I ended up, you know, I had to go on with my plan. You know, I had to go to BMX. <laughs> well, I ended up doing it and I fell in love with it. I Instantly, somehow, I, it just clicked. I used to race motocross and it just, it clicked way better than motocross for some reason. So I ended up, you know, like getting into it and I ended up changing my whole school thing. I was I stopped talking in school. I just got my work done so I could go home and go straight to the BMX track <laughs> because it was always open. So I'd always just go straight to the BMX track. Mm -hmm. So it was always fun, something to do. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So what about you, Ryan? How did you find BMX? Actually, uh, my dad used to race back in the day. So when I was born, he bought me a, kind of like, was it a Redline? Redline Micro Mini? Mm -hmm. So, and I was off training wheels about, I don't know, three years old. Started racing when I was four. Went to the track at, at around five with my cousin because he used to race too. Mm -hmm. And then I've been racing ever since. Something new on Sundays. I like traveling. Keeps me out of trouble. Right. Something to do. Yeah. So is it like the traveling? Is that what's kept you in the BMX? What's like kept you in it's BMX? It's basically like, like if you want money at a job, you gotta stay grinding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go to work every day. Just like racing. Yep. Try your hardest. Try to the finish. Yep. It's just, just like you love the challenge and yeah. that. And what's kept you in riding so long? Basically, everyone, everyone in the sport is always super nice, and they always like. Like, not everyone, obviously, they're always going to have those few people that aren't really nice, but everyone's pretty, like, helpful in the sport. Like, I remember times where, like, I've broken things while I was racing, and what do you do? You, you don't just, like, you don't just not race that day. You go ask a bunch of people, because everyone's mm -hmm. normally super nice, and if they have a spare part that they're not using, or, like, even times I've not, like, I've popped a tire on my bike, and I had to use someone else's bike oh, for yeah. that race. Take for off sure. the number plate, throw it on. Even sometimes if I don't have enough time to flip the number plate, sometimes I just talk to my announcer my dad actually runs a gate at rockford really appreciate that and so um he helps me out a lot so like if i need to i just tell him hey you know radio up to the tower right something happened you know please just tell him like I, i'm riding a different bike because something broke you know right, so like right. it just everyone is really nice and understanding in the sport and they're really i like to talk to everybody you know like everyone's pretty nice and just really good people to talk to so mm -hmm. there's a reason they call it the bmx family mm -hmm. for sure. yeah it's I literally mean, it's it not even a family it's or it's like not even a community it's a family yeah. like it's stronger than a community could yeah. be like you could be like oh my football like friends no it's not friends anymore like for bmx it's family like mm -hmm. we're, we're together you yeah know? for so. sure and it, it don't matter if i'm racing you or not yeah. you know i have no. you flatten your tire and I got a tube, I'm going to, yep. I'm going to hook you up, and, even and if you beat time. me, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm I can still put you over the berm and that's next race where you help me out and you'll still be like, oh, thank you, man, you know, good job, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's just at the end, while you're racing, no friends, why, right once you cross that finish line, oh, good job, man, you know, mm -hmm. you can take someone out, you're sitting there at the finish line waiting for someone, you know, to get back up and help be like, hey, you good, or you're sitting there like waiting for them like on the sidelines, you know, mm -hmm. like, I love that about the sport, there's like, no matter who it is normally, like, even if it's someone you don't really like, normally they're pretty much standing there. Even if, like, 
they're they're not really nice people they're just still gonna stand there and make sure you're okay mm-hmm. so like that's just something about the sport i've always liked like football people will lay you out and then just walk away not even care i, I always thought that was you know that was not fun not fair or something. Mm-hmm. yeah So you guys um, have any highlights of your um, your whole career, you know? I mean, you got some type of story that, you know, really sticks out that you want to tell everybody or that you go to your grandma's and, or, you know, <laughs> any friend that you see, you know, you tell them the story. So I don't really tell it a lot, a lot, but like it's something that kind of affects me to this day still. So I was, um, when I was younger, it was one of my first nationals. It was a Midwest national on my home track in Rockford. Um and I was racing, I won Friday and I was doing pretty good. I think I was intermediate or novice. And um, I ended up crashing on the second day and I, I think I broke it, but you know, I never really got it fully checked out, but like I really hurt my wrist. I had to ra- wrap it up and take ibuprofen a lot, you know? So like that day I ended up getting third. I was in a lot of pain, you know, but <clears throat> the next day I decided, you know, like, let's, let's time this out. I'm not, you know, this, this is my national. I'm doing good. You know, this is my home track. I can't, you know, be getting beat. And I won Friday, so I was like, I know I could win Saturday, even though, like, Friday normally isn't as big of a race as Saturday, but, <clears throat> so I was like, okay, you know, like, let's try to get it going, so, like, on Sunday, I ended up, you know, taking my ibuprofen at the perfect time, you know, making sure I was, like, my wrist was all good, and this was probably when I was, like, 10, or maybe 11 or 12, mm-hmm. so, like, I was still pretty young, so, like, I was, like, you know, like, okay with it right. and I was just like going with it mm-hmm. I ended up winning on Sunday and then I actually ended up getting put in the newspaper so that was just like one of the biggest things in my life I got put into the newspaper so like and now I have that newspaper I'll always have that I'll be able to show my kids you know mm-hmm. my kids will be able to show their kids and just I always thought that was probably what kept me in BMX almost you know like that started me wanting to stay in because I wanted more achievements and more achievements so right right yeah I, I still got like a uh, paper with me and it's yeah. somewhere, yeah. Um, you know, it's always awesome to, to get that oh, type yeah. of, you know, Recognition. You know acknowledgement, you know, yeah. like the people are seeing you doing something special, you know, so, mm-hmm. and that's definitely makes you feel a little better. What about you? You got any uh, highlights? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, 20, are you talking about 20, 2020 or any uh, anything any? that sticks out? Yeah. Right, any, so any, even the best one it was could be the worst crash. Probably crazy. about. I think, yeah, I think it was 2018 in Vegas, semis, going in the first corner, got tangled. Oh, no, I, buddy, hit, buddy on my team hit my bar, mm-hmm. bar in, so I unclipped, and my knee popped, and then, so I tore my ACL, Ooh, yeah. and then still walking on it, raced for a little, couple couple weeks. Mm-hmm. And start hurting. I'm like, oh shit, mm-hmm. <laughs> knee hurts. So we went to the hospital, got an MRI. He said, yeah, you need surgery. I'm like, oh crap. Oh man. <laughs> and I was out for about, I don't know, damn near a year. Came back 2019, broke my wrist. <laughs> <laughs> and I was out for about six months. No, it wasn't six months. It was like five months, four months, something like that. Mm-hmm. I did uh, been working on my muscles. Yeah. Try and get that back. Yeah. Because the right's bigger than the left now. I I know and how my gates aren't, aren't the same. Now. <laughs> yeah, I know how <laughs> I broke my right kneecap, bro. And like it's my my right leg is weak for right. a long time. You know, it's yeah, that definitely makes it come out of the gate really oh, weird, yeah. huh? His wrist was actually a couple like days ago. I literally just got the memories of it, so I sent it to him. It was like not that long ago. It was a memory, like, a year, a year, like a couple of days ago. It was yeah, kind of and, good memory. Right, and I mean, I've I've broken so many damn bones, man. Like I know how it is. I ended up breaking. Yeah, I ended up breaking both my knuckles and a bone in my thumb because I just flipped over the handlebars and ended up smashing my. I was winning all by myself, you know, flipped over the handlebar, smashed my hand between my brake lever, the jump, and my handlebar. So I took my hand out of my glove, thankfully, because I still got those gloves. I still love those gloves. You know, I got my fist gloves. I love those gloves. So. Mario Green's uh, jumping the pro set when I cased the first one. And mm-hmm. <laughs> didn't go for the second one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, straight oh, face. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You were, you were going to make it, too, yeah. bro. Yeah. Just, because the so, first one was bigger that year mm-hmm. and the second one was smaller but the second one had the like sand and the first one was just like you know there yeah. so if you didn't make it you probably could still make 
like the second mm-hmm. one, but it was like almost. And there was some people that could roll through it, but like, yeah. I don't know. I, I don't yeah, know. You just had like, to lean back super, Right, but there was far. so many people that just went right over the bars. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Face first. Yeah. At least yeah. I didn't have the water that year. That, that was, was like. You would have been wet for the rest of the weekend. Yeah, and that was like the first year that me and him like really actually kind of hung out, you know, yeah. we went up to the, uh, to the place together, you okay. know. Yeah. And then like the pro sneak in, the pro spectaculars. Oh, yeah. Every single pro spectacular is just amazing memory. Like just go in there watching, you know, like I remember one year watching Sam Willoughby. He like Sam Willoughby was always the beast when he was, you know, full on oh, yeah. racing. Mm-hmm. And he came out of the gate some reason like last. And like that was not like Sam, but he was booking it through everyone, you know. So like he went from last to like fourth in like the second straight by mm-hmm. the second straight where the pro set was. Ended up hitting the berm jump, cased it, oh. and flipped over the handlebar. Oh, yes, I, I, I remember know, seeing that. I don't remember how, but then I remember him coming up and I, where I was sitting. For some mm-hmm. reason, he came up and sat there and just sat there and watched the races and like cleared his head. Like I was gonna go talk to him, but it was almost like my respect to like just let him yeah, clear his head, right. you know. So like mm-hmm. I watched him and he was just like breathing, you know, like concentrating on his breathing, relaxing mm-hmm. because. That's a big race for pros. Mm-hmm. Grand's National Pro Spectacular, especially with Sam Willoughby being the number one person. That might not have been his whole weekend because he still got titles and he right. still got yeah. all that. But that was still that one race yeah. that was the main race. You yeah, know? for sure. That, that's the stage for yeah, BMX, that. for sure. Especially when you get to the pro level. That's that's the main, you know, that and Worlds. Mm-hmm. So. so, Ryder, I noticed you really didn't mention the flat pedal race last year at rockford you want to tell me a little bit about that (laughs) so yeah i kind (laughs) of forgot about that so going back like a year before that i kind of just started riding flats a lot because i had i had okay speed you know but everyone told me especially you know duddy you know he told me like make sure you ride flats because it helps your bike skill so i realized you know i wasn't doing a lot of nationals at this point you know i was like okay well I want to still get better, so I decided, you know, ride some flats. So I just threw on the flats and stopped riding clips. It could be a double point race. I didn't care. I was riding flats. And it was easier because it was winter. So it was at Elkhorn. So it was first gate for first straight. So if I got out that first straight, I was good. Unless I slipped a pedal or something like that, Mm -hmm. it was good. So it taught me how to keep my feet on my bike better for even when I have clips on. If I turn my feet, my feet do fall out. So like, you know, like taught me how to keep my feet on there. And if I need to, like, if I do come on clips, I can clip right back in. So that helped me out. So leading to that, it, it all helped me just gain my bike skills. So, and when I first started racing, I started with my buddy OD. He, he really trained me, you know, like he helped me a lot. He taught me mind over matter, you know, like if you think you can do something, you can do it, do it, you mm-hmm. know, don't go to jump a jump acting like you've never jumped it before. You gotta, you gotta act like you can. And I still say it to myself every day all the time before I go hit a jump. If you think you can, you can. If you think you can't, you can't. You know, because if I think I can't do something, I'm not going to do it, you know? So I just, I, that was in my head before that race, even with him being in that gate, you mm-hmm. know? And I remember at one clinic, he always, he told me to put him over the berm and I actually put him over the berm. <laughs> well, that race being said, I came out of the gate and somehow like, like either everyone got a crappy gate or I got the best gate of my life, you know? So I came out of the gate, it's a flat pedal shootout, you know? So I was already like prepared for this race, you know, I was ready for it. And I come out of the gate, get to first berm and I'm like neck and neck with one and two, you know, like me and OD are neck and neck. And somehow like my elbow is like kind of like in front of him. And I'm like, in my head, I don't believe it. So mm-hmm. like, I didn't really like try to put him up and over the berm. I just went for my spot. You know, I knew I had second on, on lock no matter what, but I knew OD was quick, you know? Mm-hmm. So if I wanted him not to be in the race, he had to go over the berm and I'm not that t- really like that aggressive of a rider. Mm-hmm. So I went to put him up a little bit, but I realized I just didn't want to like go for it. You know, like I was nervous. I just wanted my second place. I had some <laughs> money on the line, you know, like I was ready, you know, like I, I just, I was happy. I was in that place. I was beating you, you know, mm-hmm. someone else that trains me. Yeah, you know? I was right behind I you was, thinking, take it over. Yeah. Like literally, you know, so like yeah. I was beating you, I was beating like your, your team manager, you know, like it was just in my head, like, Oh, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. You know, like I'm doing better than I normally do. <laughs> now my flat pedals. I'm have this is like, and I was just having so much fun. So like, I just kept going, you know, and I, I ended up going, getting second in that race. I didn't go for the third spot and you almost passed me on the last straight, but thankfully somehow his uh, 
foot blew off the pedal. Yeah, after everybody told me my foot was going to come off, <laughs> yeah, I said, no, You needed those flat pedals. You needed those flat pedals, You told me, oh, I, needed I, 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 I even told you, I was like, <laughs> I'm not, I'm good. I don't need them. I ride trails and everything with yeah, these pedals. Okay, a little and backstory. Duddy doesn't r- ride flat pedals. He, for some reason, he doesn't put on flat pedals. He'll ride clip pedals with flat shoes on. So, like, before, like, when he would train me, I would have my clip shoes and my clip pedals on. And he would like say, "Okay, let's go to ride trails." And I'd be like, <laughs> "No, I have my clips on." He was like, "Throw your flats on." I was like, "I don't have, sh- I don't have flat pedals." He was like, "Why do you need flat pedals? Train yourself to keep your feet on the pedals." So I, you, you taught uh, me. I, 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 I would, I swear, I've got a picture of me riding with the um, loafers. You know, <laughs> yeah, on, yeah, clip, on the clip pedals. Literally, literally. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing super mm-hmm. style. Like it, it, it's, it's just I've, it's I've done that so long. Yeah. You know? since I was like. But it gets you uh, at the worst moments, literally. Yeah, because when I was like eight years old, you know, I, I, I that's when I started riding clips, mm-hmm. and they, you know, they just had the little cage. They oh, didn't yeah. have the cage; it was just the thing. Yeah. And I, even then, you know, it was like I couldn't tell my dad to just keep switching my pedals. Yeah, he and was it like, was he, expensive he, to buy a flip pair of nice yeah, flat and pedals. I mean, he would have switched the pedals for me yeah. if I would have asked him, but it was just I was lazy too, you know. I didn't. I, I could knew how honestly. Would he have made you, or would he have done it for you? He would have made you. I, I mean, it, either way, you know, I just I was lazy, so I yeah. just I ended up learning how to ride on them with you know flat pedal. Actually, I just got HTs not that long ago, and I'm so thankful for that because they have the little the grippers on, them, mm-hmm. so I can actually yeah. ride flats a yeah. little bit with yeah, my flat pedal. But I remembered saying that I you know I was oh I'm good I'm not gonna come yeah. off the oh, pedals yeah. of course I come off. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. When you don't want to. Right, right. <laughs> so what about you? How about uh what were you what were you doing uh after? East Moline, I know you uh, went out there and, and crashed pretty hard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Knocked myself out over the, I think it was a step up for the first jump in the first corner. Yeah. It was yeah. real windy. Mm-hmm. And then caught me. I just left, oh, actually. No. Yeah. yeah, I, did, I, think so, I yeah. just left. I was so mad. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my buddy, he's, he's about, man, I missed him crashing. Yeah, literally. I want to think see we were riding. Yeah. Right after the race. Maybe? Yeah. Was it a pro am? Did they have pro am that 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 I race? I think it was a national actually. Was it? Yeah. Yeah, the East Moline well, National. Well, it was like Fox. Yeah. Maybe like it seven, was the, yeah. Seven, it was seven, eight, eight, Sunday after yeah. the national. Yeah. Somehow they allowed you to. Normally, nationals don't allow you to ride, but like that time they were allowing everyone to ride, so we were all ripping it up after oh, the yeah. national. Windy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that didn't yeah. do well. I do remember that. I I, I remember. Um, I think it was your mom posted something about having to take yeah. you to the hospital. No, Luke. Yeah. <laughs> you, bet, you, know, I some teeth you didn't know what was going yeah, on. Like, oh. Yeah. We wore mouth guards at that time, too. Which mm-hmm. was I did. Was, and then you know, after I did. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I think that's what got him. Because I always wore a mouth guard before that. Mm-hmm. I, he crashed. And he realized he needed a mouth guard. Started wearing a mouth guard. Mm-hmm. Luckily, which on that grand was when I faced plan that I was wearing a mouth guard. <laughs> yeah, right. right, right. <laughs> yeah, you just have a real <laughs> bad string of luck. Yeah, right. A bunch of injuries. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but that's all right though. I mean, that comes with a sport. It really does come with a sport. You get back up and you try again. It's, it's all in the fun, actually. Right. So. I mean, you crash like you said earlier. You crash. You get in the gate, and once that gate drops, it's like the pain goes away until you go over that finish line. Yeah, and then I you're mean, like, you know, ah. So yeah, because I know it's like, oh, uh, yeah. But like I mean, at Midwest, and you hurt your foot that year. Mm-hmm. You know, like it hurt right away, but it didn't really fully hurt was until it like stubbed into the jump. Yeah, yeah, that's when I broke my heel. Dreger took me out. um Shout out to Jagger. No, I'm, sorry. I'm just kidding. Um, it, it happens, you know. He, I was coming, and uh, he we bumped each other, and he didn't want to give you that first. Yeah, spot. I went. My I just my leg went straight into the the, the jump. Because you, you were clipped in at that time, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know how I ended up coming a clip. I just I knew I was gonna go sideways. Yeah. Because you almost went off the track. I think. Yeah. Didn't you? Yeah. You did yeah I did. Yeah. My my tire went yeah. off the side, and it, it pushed me like to the side, mm-hmm. and I just I was. Coming, you know, sideways to the I jump. remember meeting up with you right after that, and you were rolling on your bike with your heel. You're like, yeah. I want to race tomorrow. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, thought I, I thought I was okay, but, you know. Yeah, um, you're like, oh, I'm racing tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm racing. see, the year, like, it was maybe two years before that I went, and I broke my finger. This one, it's still, like, yeah, it hurts. That. But, uh, yeah, it I was ran. The first it. Burn, wasn't it? Yeah, you it was the first burn. Yep, yep. Yeah. It was, uh, yeah, first year, um, first national with DFR, matter of fact. Um, I, I, I had my finger out. You know, because, like, that's your brake finger. Mm-hmm. And uh, I hit the hay bale because I was getting pushed in. And that was by another um, throwdown rider. or I think it was or S-squared. Um, that was, um, that that was um, John Zabricki. That was John Zabricki that took me out there. Rope for the same team. <laughs> but uh, it don't really matter, obviously. But uh, I, I, I went forward, and my finger just jabbed right into the berm. Oh. Yeah, and uh, that was on Friday. 
So like I went back the next day and I would I won um open class the next two days. Did you have your finger wrapped? Yeah, I just wrapped my finger and I, I ended up winning <laughs> open class the next two days. I, I don't know how I did in, in class. I don't think I made it. But I did win open. <laughs> it's all right, you got there. Check your brick over room. Uh, well, I I wish I don't you know I don't use brakes anyway. You know what yeah, right. I mean? I don't even know why my finger was out there. He's in a Ryan. He doesn't use brakes in the burn. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, he he breaks the bone, but yeah. Yeah. I guess yeah. <laughs> so um, I remember him doing the front flip into when he broke his wrist, doing the front flip. I was oh, yeah. watching him. He just goes practicing. over and somehow he just like got squirrely mm-hmm. and just went over, you yeah. know, like and he just launched and I was at that he just got done with his knees, so like I'm freaking out about his knee, you know, mm-hmm. like you just got that fixed, you know, you like you better not in the way he fell, he went over, so like his legs were extended, so I was like, Oh no, oh, he, like, style. you know, yeah. legs are gonna hurt. But yeah. no, he must have put his arm down. Thank kinda like yeah. thankfully, because right. I feel like if he didn't hurt his arm, he would have hurt his leg. So mm-hmm. I was like almost well, like thankful that he hurt his arm, but not thankful. I wish he would have just got back up and rode that day with me, but mm-hmm. right. That was, uh, was kind of crappy. It wasn't even, it was before racing, too. Yeah, I was was, so. practicing. Yeah. So, throughout the many years you guys have been racing, Ryder, what's a good life lesson that BMX has taught you that you get to use in your daily life? Um, it taught me a lot on how to, like, communicate with people. You know, like, it taught me how to, like, be open with, like, telling people some of my problems, you know, so they can help me. You know, like, if I have a bad gait, you know, helping people teach me how to do a better gait. If I'm not, you know, doing something right in life, like not managing something like something right, then I can ask like my parents or something like that, so, like help or counselors or anything like that. It just really helps, you know, being able to talk to people like that and yeah. just keep it, you know, going like that. It really taught you how to like ask for the help, mm-hmm. the help so, because you can't be afraid of those kinds of things when it comes to like. You, sometimes you do need to be like, hey, could you give me a little pointer right here? Yeah. I'm like having a little issue, and that's pretty like I get that. And, it's really good to have that skill and it, pretty thankful for BMX to be around to give us those things. Yeah, and it really helped me being able to t- talk to people, you know, just in everyday life, you know, like mm-hmm. even if I'm not talking to someone, you know, face to face on social media, on anything, you know, just talking to someone, it really helps just being able to actually ask them what I want, when I want, mm-hmm. you know, instead of trying to like secretly ask them, but yeah. without asking them or being scared of like getting told, no, I'm not helping you or something like that. Right, so. and I mean, that's the thing is, we're only on the track for 30 seconds, yeah. you know? So we're, that, we're mingling right. and talking, you know, mm-hmm. the rest of the time. Yeah, we're on and off the track within a minute, you know, of an actual lap, you mm-hmm. know? If we're anything, we're rolling the track. And know, even when we're waiting on, to so. go up to the race, we're yep. talking, you yep. know? And we're talking just like friends. We're n- normally not even talking about the actual race. We're normally talking about just random stuff, which mm-hmm. I like too. So, so like, it, we're, like, you say you always talk in school, so, like, was it... Just that, like, it helped you talk to people that were, like, older than you, or what kind of... So, like, in school, I used to always talk to people because I used to get bored a lot, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, at school, when I was younger, it was really easy for me. Like, I never had homework. I never had anything, you know? Like, it was super easy. It was kind of boring, you know? Like, and my favorite class was gym because I got to go do something. And when I was younger, I didn't get to walk to all my classes like I did when I got older. So, like, it was just hard to not, Mm -hmm. you know, because I would never be moving. I would always want to do something, so I'd always get in trouble for it. But then, like, eventually I just got used to, like, you know, knowing my priorities. Like, I really wanted to go home and go straight to the BMX track. But if I wanted to do that, I had to get my homework done in school. Plus, I had to be good in school and not get in trouble in school. Mm -hmm. So I made sure I got my, you know, my priorities straight and set up and all that. So it really helped me talk to everyone, you know. Good. And what kind of stuff has it taught you? Well, I kind of talked about this a little bit earlier, but basically I see it as... If you want money, like, basically, like, in the real life, like, if you want money, you gotta work for it. Mm-hmm. Basically, like, on the track. If you want to win, you gotta work for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Close your doors and corners and pedal. Don't don't let up to the finish line. Yeah. Really taught you some, like, perseverance. Oh, yeah. You really, hard work, good work ethic. Yeah, don't give up. Learning from your mistakes. It taught me that one thing, like, oh, yeah. when I mess up on the track, what can I do? Oh, that race is probably over. Or something? You know, mm-hmm. like, I can't just, you know, reverse time five seconds to fix that one mistake it's next lap or next weekend you know it's 
try something new or mm -hmm. practice something all week so I can do better on that next Sunday or that next Wednesday. You know, so, never giving up. Yeah, you, like, right. you just you never know like you like, know what's somebody, gonna happen. Right, you know, like, somebody gonna crashed. fall. Mm -hmm. Go down the bottom. Mm -hmm. Basically, like when I was in California, I was in fifth. No, I was in third because it's first round still. Mm -hmm. I was in third and. Dude didn't pedal to the finish. I went right on by him. That's yeah. transfer first round. Yeah. That's yeah. how I made my first main event. At, that's how I made my first main event at Grands National. I was racing, you know, like I was. I finally made it to semis. I've made semis quite a bit. I always have a tendency of getting fifth in semis. You know, that's just how it is. You know, at Grands yeah. National, you always get fifth in semis. So, mm -hmm. um, so like I was, I was in fifth or sixth in semis. I think I was in fifth. But the two people in front of me, they were battling and. I was in position to make it, but they ended up passing me on this rhythm section, but they were neck and neck and, you know, bumping elbows on the rhythm section. And they ended up, I, I'm watching them and I'm not giving up because I know something can happen at any moment. That last turn where someone blasts someone, I can go under both of them, you know, mm -hmm. something like that. Something mm -hmm. can happen. They might have been pulling away from me real far, but anything can happen. Right. So they pulled away from me, but they ended up getting tangled up and everyone behind me already gave them up because they didn't think they were going to get the race. Well, I'm never giving up, so I just kept going and ended up making my main event yeah. at Grand. Yeah. That's the same know? thing as, as in, in real life, you know, like uh, I'm at a job, you don't quit. Yeah. You don't quit. You mess something you up, you got to fix it. Right. You, know? you, you never can't know. just give up. <laughs> right. You, know? you never know. You stay there. Some, like you said, somebody might mess up their job. You might get promoted just because, you know, you're just sticking in there, staying, yeah. going, going, you know. Exactly. So. So with that, um, is there is there a place that, uh, on social media that people can find you? Um, for me, you can uh, find me on Snapchat on uh, Ride Award O uh, three and on Instagram Ride Award O two and also on Facebook at Ride Award. So, yeah. What about you? Uh, just Facebook Ryan Lomi and uh, on Snapchat uh, Ryan underscore BMX two. All right. All right. So with everything coming to a close here. Ryder, do you have anyone you'd like to thank for getting you where you're at today? Um, I'd like to, again, thank my uh, sponsor, Kegel's Bike Shop. You know, they're always there for my, you know, parts when I need them and, you know, helping me out with getting everything I need. Um, and the main person I'd really like to thank is my father. Um, even with everything that's going on with his life, um, working, you know, like health and everything, um, he's always there for me, you know, like no matter what. And he's always at the track every single day, working as much as he can to keep me at the track, you know. He's always been there for me. He's probably one of my biggest idols I've ever looked up to. So he's one person I'd really like to thank. So. And you, Ryan, do you have anyone you'd like to thank for getting you where you're at today? Yeah, I do. I want to thank you for Dan, Dan's count. I was getting my parts there. I get 15% off. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I want to thank my father. I was getting me to the races. I was fixing my bike when it's broke. <laughs> I was telling you. How to ride if I'm in gated and you can get over after the white line, hug your corners, don't right, give up. Right. right. Yeah, I mean, uh, with that being said, I, I want to thank both of their, their parents. They both both of their parents have done a lot for me. Um they're, for us. They're, yeah, for both of us. They're wonderful people. Um and with that being said, uh give us a like if you like our video. Um go ahead and subscribe as well. And if you want to keep in touch and make sure you get the notification for our next video go ahead and hit that bell and until then um we'll see you next time and thank you for watching guys appreciate you have a good one see ya peace dude